After looking through some designs online, the group decided that we would model our blade after an elven sword. The shape and dimensions of the blade were determined, as well as the aesthetic features and the materials and processing required for the fabrication of the blade. The safety issues related to each step were identified. It was also ensured that the individuals participating in each step had access to the proper personal protective equipment. We had two steels to choose from, a 1018 purchased from a metal supermarket and T95 collected from a broken tensile specimen. T95 was selected due to its high strength and corrosion resistance. One half of the tensile specimen was to be used to make the blade, while the other half was to be used for metallographical analysis and for the test required to determine the optimal heat treatment. Using online literature, we determined that the desired hardness would be around 50 to 60 Rockwell C, and discussions with Drs. Chen and Wiskel of the University of Alberta determined that a microstructure of tempered martensite would achieve a balance between hardness and ductility. With the blade designed and the desired properties identified, we were ready to begin forging. Forging began by heating the steel up to the point that it was glowing. This was achieved through the use of a coal forge. Here you see Mike pumping oxygen into the coals while the metal heats up. Once the metal was sufficiently hot and malleable, we were able to begin forming. Here you see Lindsay forming the tang of the blade. Once the blade began to take shape, it had to be drawn out to add length. Here you see Skylar and Joseph working together to draw out the blade. Skylar hits the blade where he wants Joseph to hit with a sledgehammer, and they continue this process until the blade has gained sufficient length. Now that the blade has been drawn out, final adjustments can be made to the blade. We see Mike straightening out the spine of the blade and adding curvature to the tip. Finally, the blade had to be quenched in order to form martensite. This was done in a large can of water. With the shape of the blade finished, we were ready to move on to the heat treatment and aesthetics. Due to a lack of resources, austenitization had to be done with a gas torch. Ideally, we would have used a furnace and thermocouples. After austenitization, samples were quenched and tempered at 350 degrees Celsius for times ranging from 30 to 90 minutes at 15 minute intervals. Hardness values were recorded to observe the effectiveness of the tempering. From the tempering trials, it was determined that the ideal treatment was 350 degrees Celsius for 45 minutes, yielding an average hardness of 406 on the Vickers scale. After applying the heat treatment to the blade, the aesthetic portion of the preparation had to be performed. Divots from the hammer blows were removed using an angle grinder. This left the surface of the blade flat. The now flat surface could then be ground and polished using sandpaper starting at 180 grit and working in increments to 2000 grit. The polished blade was then covered in wax and the design was carved out, making sure to expose the metal underneath. The blade was then dipped in ferric chloride for 40 minutes. After the time had elapsed, the wax was removed using boiling water, revealing the etched pattern on the blade. To attach the handle, the tang had to be heated up using a gas torch and burned into a block of wood. This process ensured a tight-fitting handle that did not require any adhesives. Now that the block of wood had been attached, the first step was to trim it to size using a hacksaw. The handle was then shaped using a dremel with a sandpaper drum attachment. The last step was to wrap the handle with deerskin lace using a bit of adhesive to secure it. <laughs> 